Welcome to Electron Line. In this video, we're going to develop the diagonal elements of the inertia tensor. And the way we're going to do that is realizing that the angular momentum is equal to the moment of inertia times the angular velocity. So we're going to start with this equation right here, that in vector form, the angular momentum is equal to m, the mass of the particle, times the position vector from the point of rotation to where the particle is at, times the velocity of the particle or the cross product of the particle because it's r cross v and then we can replace v by omega times r or the cross product between omega and r omega of course is the angle of velocity and r again is that same position vector from the point of rotation to where the particle is at if we then manipulate that equation a little bit the equation then becomes and we factor out an m we get m times r squared times omega minus the dot product between r and omega times r. And then if we go ahead and calculate the angular momentum for each of the three directions, the x direction, the y direction, and the z direction, after all, we have r, the position vector, which is a vector in x, y, and z. If we do that, then we have r squared times omega sub x, and then here we have r, to, r dot omega, we're going to have the three terms, x times omega sub x, y times omega sub y, z times omega sub z, all multiplied times the x component of the position vector. We do the same thing for the y component and the z component. In each case, of course, the first term in here is going to be r squared times omega sub x, r squared times omega sub y, and r squared times omega sub z. Oh, this should be a sub z. That's a subscript. There we go. And then, of course, we have the corresponding x, y, and z terms over here. Now, what we can do here is realize that when we multiply these together, multiply this x times each term in here, we have an x squared, an xy, and an xz. Here we multiply, we get an xy, y squared, yz. And here we get an xz, yz, z squared. If we do that, in this case, we take the x squared here and the r squared here, multiply times omega sub x, and we can write it as a single term here with the two remaining terms over there. We do the same for the second and the third angular momentum for in the y direction and the z direction. Again, we have r squared minus y squared, r squared minus z squared, times the appropriate omega, the angular velocity, plus the other terms right here. And once we have that, we go back to the concept that the angular momentum is equal to the moment of inertia times omega. So what we're going to do here is look at the diagonal elements, which are right here. So here we have m r squared omega. These are the diagonal elements, and these are the off-diagonal elements, and we'll worry about those in the next video. But here we're going to concentrate on these. So we'll take L sub x over here, and then we can say that L sub x is equal to i times omega. So this quantity right here has to be the moment of inertia around the x-axis. So m r squared is a general equation of the moment of inertia, but in this case it's m times r squared minus x squared, which is going to give us the first diagonal term in our inertia tensor. We'll call that ixx. So we'll have the ixx term, the iyy term, and the izz term, the three diagonal terms. So we realize that r squared can be written as x squared plus y squared plus z squared. So r squared minus x squared becomes this. Then we cancel out the x's and we end up at m times y squared plus z squared and this is the moment of inertia tensor element the first one on the diagonal in the upper left corner that gives us the moment of inertia around the x-axis we do the same for the y-axis right here we have r squared minus y squared again since r squared is x squared plus y squared plus z squared but in this case is going to be minus y squared. The y squares cancel out, end up with m times x squared plus z squared. And on the third term, and we're trying to find the moment of inertia about the z-axis, then it's r squared minus z squared. Again, r squared is x squared plus y squared plus z squared, but now we'll get minus z squared. The z squares cancel out, and we're left with m times x squared plus y squared. So here we have the three diagonal terms, or the diagonal elements of the inertia tensor which is derived from the concept of the angular momentum, where angular momentum is the moment of inertia times omega, and so that's how we solve for the diagonal terms. Now, in the next video, we're going to take the same equations and solve for the off-diagonal terms, and then we'll explain what those actually mean, because that's always a mystery for most people, so we'll make that clear to you as well. So stay tuned, and we'll tackle the off-diagonal terms in the next video.